Hey, 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 how you doing? Happy holidays, Merry Christmas to you. Yeah, I know. You know, you're not saying it right, Eli. You're not, it's, it's Christmas. Well, upon my observation, it's just personal. You don't have to take this with you. I wrote down the word Christmas one time, and to me it says Christ Mass. Now, now English teachers and people that know more about the language and all that, they're going to eat me alive. But me personally, when you say Christmas, you silence the T. Now, T, the T to me represents the cross. So you're taking Christ out of Christmas by saying Christmas. Uh-uh, 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 Christ Mass. That is just for me. If you would like to take that and begin to use it yourself, guess what? We together can change the dynamic that has been introduced to us for so many years. So I say Merry Christ Mass. Just like the young people are saying, no cap. Now, I was like, wait a minute. No cap. No cap. You cap. And I'm like, <laughs> so finally I decided that at my age, I shouldn't be trying to figure things out in my brain, go to somebody and get some help, get some answers from somebody. So that's what I did. I asked my godson, no cap, what does that mean? They said, that means you're not lying. When you say no cap, that means you're not lying. That means you're capping. That means you're lying. So am I right? Yeah. <laughs> I, got, I got a young brother, brother sitting next to me say, yeah, bro, you're right. So in my opinion, I believe what you say. Merry Christ Mass. As we get ready to celebrate the birthday of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and that, that's a good transition to the Eli Smith Soul Patrol, on patrol for souls. If you're tuning in for the very first time, welcome in. Thank you so much for tuning in. And some of my friends that listen to me on the radio, watching me and listening to me, now, thank you for joining me. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. Come on in. Find your seat. If you can't find a chair, then I got good carpet on the floor. Just sit on the floor <laughs> and cross your legs because we're going to have a great discussion today. I've got an awesome gentleman as my guest, and uh, we, we're just excited about that. But before we get into our interview, as always, we'd like to explain why we call it the Eli Smith Soul Patrol. Well, I got the word, I got, <laughs> I got the name Soul Patrol from an album that you can go, it's an instrumental on an album by Quincy Jones. The album, the double album, is called I Heard That. And on that album is an instrumental Soul Patrol. Not nice music bed for anything. So I decided to use Soul Patrol and then I connected on patrol for souls. That's why at the end of the broadcast, we like to remind you that if you have not ever accepted Jesus Christ as, Lord, as your Lord and Savior, you don't have to wait till Sunday come. You don't have to wait till you get in front of a preacher. You don't have to stop drinking. You don't have to stop laying around. All that stuff, you don't have to stop doing, doing to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Because when you bring him into your life, what you're doing, you say, Lord, help me. I know I'm a sinner. I know, I'm, I, know I ain't doing right. The Bible talks about even when I try to do right, wrong is always present. Don't try to fix it yourself because the truth is, I've got 30 years of sobriety. The truth is, if I could have stopped on my own, then I would have never had to go to jail. <laughs> I would have never had to go to a program because I could do it myself. And if you can do it yourself, you don't need any help. You're, piece, you're trying to move a piece of furniture in your house. Now, if you can move that furniture by yourself, it would have been done, but you need some help. <laughs> and if you've not saved and you want, you want your life, not only just your life to change, the thinking changes. Because the Bible says... As a man thinketh, so is he. So at the end of the broadcast, we extend the invitation for you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And if you don't do it today, I ain't mad at you, baby. But what I want to encourage you to do is to do it. As the old folk would say, do it for it's everlasting too late. Because <laughs> the Lord is coming back. Yes. I know a lot of you have heard that and you say, I'm hearing that over and over and over and over and over, and over again. All I got to say is this the truth? How do I know it's the truth? Because the truth don't change. Now, a lie, I can tell, I tell a lie, 
And by the time it get back to me, it's a whole it's a whole new lie. Cause mm. li- lies change, right. but the truth don't change. One more example: winter, spring, summer, and fall. That's the truth. The seasons never change. And one good thing about it, God don't ask me to help Him change. Have him change summer to to winter and, and none of that. So anyway, we welcome to the Eli Smith Soul Patrol. I'm so excited. I'm always excited about being on, just talking to you because I've never done this before. And this is something that I've done for the first time. And I want to thank my new the new owner of WIGO, Miss Sheila L. Brown, who's getting ready to take us all to a whole nother level. And for me, I'm excited because. Here's a young boy, grew up in Dixie Hill, wanted to do radio, listen to Dwayne Jones, Doug Steele, Dr. Feelgood, Connie Flint, Zilla Mays, uh, Chico Renfro, Brother Edwin Patterson, Larry Tizzle. I grew up with all them guys, listening to them on the radio. And some of them, remember all of them that are still living, are personal friends of mine. So when I get, exci- get excited about radio, I'm excited because God, and, and, and let me just say this, I'm not bragging on me. Don't get it twisted. I'm not bragging on me. But what I am, who I am bragging about is the one who created me. He took, he took James Smith <laughs> and my mother, Eddie Mae Smith. <laughs> that was a good night. And hello, if you be honest, honest, you got here, it was a good night. Hello? Hello, hello. Don't act like you don't know what happened. <laughs> my mom and daddy got together. It was a good night. Right, right. She may have been mad with him, but once they got together, that madness went went away for a minute. But out of that, oh, thank you, Jesus, out of that madness, <laughs> out of what people say, you was a mistake. Out of all of that, God created you, and you are here. So I'm just excited, man, because my dream came true. I want to do radio, and I've been doing it for 30 years by the grace of God. I have a clean record. I haven't done what the bad, <laughs> the bad stuff I've done. Y'all don't know about it because <laughs> I did it with me, and I know I, I was there. I did it by myself. Hello, but I try not to do bad things now. But I'm just excited. I'm also excited about my guest today. And let me put on my glasses. A lot of people say, Keith, Eli, why you wear your glasses on your head? Because I like to see what I'm saying <laughs> sometimes." <laughs> So my my eyeglasses help me to see inside inside my brain. You believe that if you want to. But anyway, this gentleman, first of all, I had the wonderful opportunity of meeting him and working with him when we both were cast in the play, the Sam Cook story, Nat Jones, Nat Nat. Not Nat King Cole, mm-hmm. but Nat, <laughs> Nat George, the writer and producer of the Sam Cook story, A Chain Gonna Come. And I met Orlando there. He played the role of, of Pastor Cook. Sam Cook's father was a preacher. And he played the role of Sam Cook's father in the play and did a great job. And I didn't know, you know, I just thought when I saw the brother hanging around during rehearsal, I just thought, yeah, he here's somebody else just coming in to be a part of the play with no experience. But after he began to act and I watched him critique things and, and put his input in, I said, this young man, he'd been on this train before. And he has been. He's a wonderful gentleman, a playwright and director of a play, What a Man Wants. And a, what a man wants and a man needs to know. Star of the movie, what's that? Trice? Yeah, thri- that? thrice. 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 Yeah. Star of the movie Kate's House, currently filming the, the movie Backstabbers. Are you using the OJ's music as a movie? No. Man? <laughs> Backstabbers, the Kelvin Lawson trial, and the founder of, of the hit podcast. Bro Code on YouTube. We're going to talk about that. And he's a director. I'm a, he's a director, director, play, and movie and movie writer and actor. Ladies and gentlemen, in your mind, I will, in your mind, I want you to put a, a applause a sound bite in your mind as I introduce to you my good friend Orlando and Orlando. I, I, I beg to differ, but I don't remember your last name. Anderson. <laughs> it's Anderson. Orlando Anderson. Great yeah. last name. My brother-in-law, James Anderson, uh, is married to my wonderful sister. They've been married 30-plus years and have a wonderful son. So, Anderson, when you say that, say that name in the, 
It's just wonderful. And I, and I appreciate you being here, Orlando. Mm-hmm. Tell us a little, welcome to the show. Welcome to the Elon Smith Soul Patrol. So glad to have you here. I think you are the second guest. Am I right, Dante? Uh, sometimes it's better. Okay, but... Yeah. Yeah, my, my third guest that I've had on the show, and I'm excited about what you're doing, man. I'm excited about what the the attention that you're going to bring to this podcast because of your following and the people that you know and because of your drip. Now, I'm going to forgive you this time, bro. <laughs> but the next time we, <laughs> we're together, at least give me a warning, okay? <laughs> because you look great, man. Yellow is a, my, my favorite color of the house that we lived in on Dixie Hill. Was, was yellow and yellow and yellow was a very and my sister's first car was a yellow firebird so when I see yellow it brings back memories but welcome to the show Orlando Anderson so glad to have you here man tell us a little bit about yourself where you're from and uh, and where you're going and what you're doing now welcome to the show Orlando uh, thank you for having me Mr. Eli I appreciate that uh, yeah like I said you know basically um I grew up in Florida um got like uh, siblings and you know, my mom passed when I was 11, so I was raised by my grandmother. My, my, my dad's actually a pastor, so, you know, kind of like a, a PK, you know, so, okay. you know, growing up. But uh, like I said, like, I've been um, writing for a long time. Um, used to write a lot of poems and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, as I, I got older and got into acting and stuff like that, you know, I put my um, writing skills to work. Um, and to, to, correct, to correct Mr. Eli, the name of my play is What a Woman Wants, What a Man Needs to Know. Okay. That's another, okay. So, but, but um, basically, uh, I was um, able to perform the play um, a couple of times. So we, we're getting ready to bring it back in April of next year. So I'm super excited about that. Um, basically, but like I said, you know, you know, starring in different movies and you know plays and stuff like that. You know, it's really you know I always been a passion of mine to be an actor. So you know, God truly blessed me this year to be able to you know pause a lot of the things that I wrote. And go out and network and and be a part of different movies and plays and meet new people and network with people. So now that it's come back and around for me to bring my stuff back to the forefront, I know a lot of people and I'm able to reach out to those same people that I work with and network with for them to be a part of my production and cast. So you know, I'm super excited about that. So you kept you kept your nose clean and you've done things as right as you possibly could and right don't wrong nobody. As my mother always told me. Now see a musical. Symbol on your t- tattoo on your arm is how much singing do you do? Because you gotta you gotta have some music in your blood to, to yeah. put it on your arm. And what does that represent for you? Okay, so yeah, I do sing, uh, sing at church, and but I'm a DJ also. Okay, yeah, so uh, I, I, wear, I wear many hats. Mm. You know, I just like I said, a lot of my friends think I'm Jamaican, but I'm not. <laughs> you know, I, I, wear, I wear plenty of hats because you know I just always feel like you should always you know put your hand in a lot of different different hats to be able to say you, you know, have a lot of different skill sets. So I just try to basically, you know, learn what I can and, you know, do different things. Also, I play the saxophone. Okay. So, you know, like music is in my blood. It's one of the things that really, you know, keeps me focused. And, you know, when I'm having a hard time or when I'm trying to write, I listen to music. Everything I do is basically to music. So okay. I love music. Wow, wow, wow. And I'm going to say something, and please don't. I know I'm going to get some bad comments about it, but I'm just saying what people used to say. Because back in the day, people used to say, um, uh, (laughs) well, I don't know if I can say it, but I'm going to say it. I'm going to ask y'all to forgive me first, but I'm saying this as making, it's a cliche that people say in reference to having more things. And then one, a friend of mine, God bless his soul, we were in recovery together. Uh, He's going on. He used to say, Eli, it's a pole hole. We don't have but one trick. <laughs> and if you listen to that, it's true. If you are prostituting and you ain't got but one client, right. man, you don't starve out there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a poor hole to have but one trick. Come on now. <laughs> you missing all this money, all these conventions right. coming to town, all these. Right. And I'm not promoting and I'm not condoning prostitution, but people do what they want to do. Right. And if we talk about prostitution, we just had. <laughs> The election is over, and right. I'm so glad we're running and not walking. Hello. Right. We just had a great illustration of... Right, right. I, I'm grateful for that, too. We just had a great illustration of the views and opinions expressed on this podcast mm-hmm. and not that of the management staff or the owner or, or Vision Multimedia, but we just had a good example of prostitution. 
in our election. I'm gonna say that and move right on. <laughs> but um, uh, doing so many things, and and and, and I'm always interested in people that write music, and then not only write it, but then get begin to develop it. And now it's a song. It's almost like. I guess like what, what um, Barry Gordy did with Motown Records, he used the example of the Detroit uh, 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 Motor Company, where he worked for many years, where it comes in, it comes in like this, but then it goes through all these challenges and changes, and now you got a car. How how is it that people like you write and not only write, put the music to it, and then make it a finished product? H- how is writing done for you? How do you do writing? Orlando? Well, um, like I said, basically, I, the craziest part, man, a lot of my different ideas and, and, and movies and plays, it come to me while I'm asleep. That's the funny part. You know okay. what I'm saying? You know, basically, I'm always thinking a lot and, like, different topics and, you know, different things like that come to me while I sleep. So I just basically have a notepad by my, my, by my bed, and I just roll over and just write stuff down. But, you know, like I said, I usually try to, to target, um, you know, what we have going on in the world. Um, a lot of my plays, mostly drummer plays and stuff like that. So I just look at different um, situations that people may be going through or that may seem realistic that maybe, maybe people can like ref- relate to. So, you know, when I'm writing, I'm trying to keep people's attention and do different things that, you know, people are, you know, can relate to so they can clearly understand. And like I said, the play that we're putting on in April what a woman wants, what a man needs to know is dealing with a lot of different, you know, scenarios and situations that I feel like people can relate to. Mm-hmm. That's powerful, especially when you said most of your ideas come to you while you sleep. And that just made me think about, I believe the closest we come to being in a coma is when we're asleep. That's the closest we come to just being in a coma. But then I thought about what you said about writing at, at, when you sleep, things come to you. Then I think, in a way, that's that's what that's one of the ways God can really speak to you. Because when you're sleeping, there are no interruptions. Right. You don't hear the phone. So I turn on the light. You're you're totally secluded. Hallelujah. Right. You're totally secluded, and that's a great time for God to be able to speak to you. And 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 that's that's just how I perceive what you said as far as right. writing stuff and getting it. While you're sleeping, then in a, then you wake up right then and you write it down. And documentation is very important. Right. And, and 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 I applaud you. I applaud you for that. And, and and talk about when when did you decide that music? You love music. Did you play in the band? Did you sing in the glee club? Were you in the choir in high yeah. school? Yeah. What, I, did this, what did this music? When did this music bug jump on you, brother? Well, I've been I've been <laughs> I've been singing since I was five. Okay. Yeah. So like singing in the church choir. Um, basically singing in school choir and stuff like that. So I've been singing for a long time. Like I said, it's always been, you know, my, my passion. Like I said, and music is definitely a passion of mine because it clearly helps me get through the day yeah. uh, every day. You know, like I said, no matter what I'm doing, uh, how I'm feeling, you know, whether I'm in the gym, whether I'm, you know, walking, whether I'm washing my car, whether I'm cleaning my house, it doesn't matter. You know, I got to have some kind of music that basically, you know, it clears my head and, and it helps me think. Yeah, man, mu- music, man, music is a motivator and I'm like you. Whenever, I, matter of fact, when I get home, after I put my stuff down out of my hand, I go to my JBL speaker, turn it on, and and begin listening to music. And I love all kinds of music. Uh, who, speaking of music, who is your favorite artist? Give me two of your favorite artists. Well, so two of my favorite artists, um, it's gonna have to be Tank and um, Boyz II Men. Okay, and and, yeah. and and why why Tank and Boyz II Men? Well, Boyz II Men, like I say, it's the harmony. Okay. Um, basically, I've been a, a fan of them for a long time. Um, if I had to pick, I, I forgot. I gotta, get, I gotta do three. I gotta do three. Okay. And Silk, and Silk okay. is okay. Yeah, and Silk is one of my favorite groups also. But like I say, it's just the the harmony and the, the brotherhood that they have. Um, being able to, you know, sing together and you know put out the the the, the, the sound that they do and being able to work together, you know. And then as far as Tank, I just love Tank's vision and how he expresses love through his music. You know what I'm saying? So uh, those three are my favorites. I'm going to start listening to a little little more Tank. Um, I'm familiar with him, but, of course, I come from a whole other generation as far as music is concerned because my two favorite artists, and if I had to pick three, my top artists would be Stevie Wonder. Mm -hmm. The second would be um, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Mm -hmm. And the third would be Quincy Jones. Okay. Okay. Uh, And that's because of... And then, of course, I love music, period, man. Music... Mm -hmm. But when we talk about music nowadays, you, you're a young man. You've been around a while. Will, will profanity 
and the disrespect of women. When will, and, and we, we talked about prostitution earlier, mm-hmm. so I'm going to say it like this, when will the prostitution of good rap music be eliminated? Will, or do you ever think our young people that are making music, and now you know, Orlando, I got a godson right here. <laughs> they make their music, they record it, they edit it, and the sound is just as good. They are making, these young people are doing it, and I applaud you, I applaud you. These young people are recording music, they have their own recording studio right here. And, and some of them t- t- have taken their closet in their home and made it a recording studio, but my concern is the MFs and the I don't give a and the F and the will we ever you ever think we ever get back to music minus that? Because a lot of let me say I'm, I'm, I'm I want you want you to answer mm-hmm. because a lot of times the music is good, mm-hmm. the lyrical content is good, but then they tarnish it with the F you or I don't you know to me that tarnishes some good music and I know I'm from another generation and all that but. We can make music with all of, without all of that. So, give me your take on that, man. Well, I, I feel like it comes from most people that do, do music like that. They, they trying to target what's going to sell. Um, they're looking at it like that. But I feel like you know you can you can get your point across in your music without all that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We we as, we as black people, I said we as black people, we have to realize that um, you know. They gonna the, these record producers and stuff like that. They want us to continue to feed our people, you know, n- language like that as if we don't know no better. Okay. So okay. I feel like if they perform, you know, better, you know, come up with an album that that basically has less of that, you still can get your message across without having, you know, being disrespectful to the women or the cussing and all that. You still can get, you know, it's different artists that put out music that still sound good without all that. Yeah. So I just feel like when, when they put all that stuff in, they're targeting a generation that they feel like that. That's the, the knowledge and the, the language they need to feed to our younger people. And basically, they t- put a beat to it that's going to make them vibe, and then they're going to learn the words to it. And now they perf- they're saying the same language. But if you if you take that same beat yeah. and put a positive message to it, yeah. you still can get the same outcome. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. And I, I don't know if I'll be around uh, when when music takes another turn, because music has always, music has always been evolving. It always has been. From um, the Dixie Hummingbirds to Sam Cooke live at the Capone, uh, uh, live at the Cabana, music is always changing. Music, gospel music, is always changing, always revolve, evolving. But somewhere down the line, in my opinion, the, the music of our culture has taken a very interesting turn. And, uh, and the sad part about it is the young people that are listening to it now have babies, so they're sitting in the car and they're listening to it too. So now we have a group of people that are passing on something to a generation that, in my opinion, just my opinion, is just is just crucial and, and critical. Hey, man, Orlando, let people know how they can get in contact with you. Talk about, you got, you got about three minutes. Talk about what you got coming up and the play that you'll be bringing to the to the stage real soon. Okay, so right now, like I said, we we basically filming on uh, the movie Backstabber. We just finished, we just completed a couple of scenes last night. Um, so basically, uh, we, you know, with, with the lowest wheel and everything, that'll be out sometime next year. Um, basically, like I said, I'm casting for my new play, What a Woman Wants, What a Man Needs to Know, um, this this on um, the 18th of this month. So where, I'm gonna be looking where? for a new talent um, for that, and we, we basically put on the play on the the 29th of April of next year. Um, also, like I said, I have a part cast that's on YouTube. If you go to YouTube and type in Bro Dash Code S two, um, we have like eleven episodes on there right now currently. So me and the guy, shouts out to my bro code brothers. Um, we, we gotta say we basically it's a good podcast. We talk about different um, topics, you know, in the world that's going on. Um, mostly uh, season three, we're gonna basically gonna be focusing on the black community and different topics of that sort. So I'm super excited about that. And like I said, and also um, in the present of, of December of next year, also I'm looking forward to putting this gospel musical play for mm. Christmas. So got a couple of, couple of different projects coming up. Um, so I'm super excited about it. But I, I give thanks to God for being able to give me the knowledge and the power. 
and put me around surround people that's that's basically I can network with that's gonna help me be successful. If somebody's interested in casting, where will your casting play, take place? Well, how can they get in contact with you if they're interested in, interested in casting for one of your productions? Okay, if they look interested, you can follow you can follow me on Instagram. That's gonna be DJ Hike Dog H I K E D O G G nine nine. Um, also on Facebook, uh, Sean Anderson, S H U N Anderson, um, parentheses DJ Hike Dog. That's my um, Facebook. And like I said, and basically, you know, you can reach it, reach me through Instagram and Facebook. Uh, when I give it to the post for the um, the casting, it's going to be on both of those platforms. So just look out for it. Hey, listen, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I encourage you right now to see, say this simple prayer God, I've tried to do it by myself. And God, I need your help. So, Lord, I'm surrendering myself to you. Father God, I'm taking the brakes off, Father God. Everything I've tried to do, I know you can do. So, God, I'm accepting you now as my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Be the landlord of my heart. Be the landlord of my mind. Be the landlord of all my thoughts, God. Take me, use me, God. Help me, speak to me, show me the way. I'm surrendering myself to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You're saved. You saved. Now, what do you do? Read the Bible. Not the whole thing at one time. Come take a Bible verse today. Whatever it takes. This start doing things differently. If you want diff- if you want different things to happen to you, then you got to do things differently. Read the Bible. Get spiritually connected. Find a church, a pastor that you can go and and and, and vibe with, and and just just do it better. And stop doing it. Stop trying to help yourself. And remember to join me every morning from ten. From 10 until 12 on the legendary WIGO page set of 1570. You can also listen to us online all around the world at WIGO1570.com. I want to thank my man Dante behind the scene for always making me look good and clean. And I want to thank God. I want to thank Kevin Collins, all my friends, all my family at WIGO, and our new owner, Ms. Sheila L. Brown. Thank you. And to all of you, Merry Christmas to you. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Hanukkah. Happy New Year. And 2003 is going to be real good for you and me. Let me say it again. 2003 is going to be very good for you and me. I love you from the basement of my heart to the balcony of my mind. Orlando Anderson, thank you, brother, for for being a part of what we're doing here. Thank and I look forward me. to watching your podcast and, and watching you, your stage performances on stage. I'm your guy, Elon. I love you from the basement of my heart to the balcony of my mind. Until next week, peace, have a wonderful life, and do it on purpose. <laughs>